Welcome back again to the next episode in the Truck Camper Build series. If you're new here, this is an entire series of a full rebuild of a 1977 Sunline truck camper. If you want to see more, you're going to see the link, click on it, that's the whole playlist, follow along, join because we're at 60 something videos in this series. Okay, so ready? In this video, you, it, it, you're getting a combo meal. You know, it's like, you ever go to, you ever get lunch, you get soup and a salad, that's what this video is going to be because we got two random things going on. We got curtains, the curtain rods, all that shebang, and then we have a water leak. Those don't go together, but guess what? They do in this video because that's the way it was. That's the way it happened, and you're gonna see it. So let's roll the footage. We have the next project. We're doing custom curtains here, and um, I'll show you what we got and how we're gonna do it. We're gonna be using, we're gonna stay with the theme. We got a lot of brass hardware. We got copper colored backsplash. So we kind of have like a brass and copper type theme going with this camper half inch bell style copper tubing i got a little drill bit here get it started now i'm not using a drill because i want to be able to feel this so they don't break all right that one's in and then i'll do the other side we have both of them up there both of those bell brackets now we're gonna measure the, we're gonna go, we're gonna make the curtain rod go to the outside of this trim. So I'm gonna measure to the outside of the trim, which is 25 and a half. And we're gonna subtract a quarter inch from that. So it's gonna be 25 and a quarter is what we need. Okay, we need 25 and a quarter. And we need 25 and a quarter. So I'm gonna move this till I get to that point, which is right there. And we are gonna cut this. This is all right. Cut. Okay, we have the half-inch M-type copper. Going to put the cap on. Tighten it in the vise gently. Get some flux here. Put it on there. Get your half-inch cap. Throw that on there. Give this a little bit of flux. All right, that's your pops. That's a coffee stirrer there. Get your solder. Get your torch. Just give it a little bit. That's all you need. This is a wet sock. Clean it off. There you go, there's a final product there for one cap. So here you go. Here's the soldered up curtain rod. We're gonna flip these out, see if our measurements are right. They look okay at least, I don't know. Try to even it up. There you go, there's that curtain rod. Everything's good, it's done. Yeah, I like it. I like the way that looks, yeah. Good? Yeah. Nice. I like it. And then all I have to do is make a loop of fabric. I don't know. Like if I make a, sh you know, fabric, fabric, it's gonna be bunched up here and then we can just tie them. But it, it's fine. Like, it's just, you're never gonna get the full window. Yeah, I know. A and that's okay. I mean, cause you can still open it. Got the custom, what do they call this, steampunk or whatever? Curtain rod, it's just half inch copper pipe. Thank you. 
We need to get some. Yeah, I'm gonna tie them back. I don't know. Rain. Yeah. And what does that mean for campers? We're we're not doing good today. This is probably this is probably the lowest at this build right now. We don't have a place to put this camper. We can't put it in and there's a bad leak. Very bad. Come take a look. Look at this floor. I just thank God I went in here tonight. I was gonna load it on the truck. The whole entire floor is soaked. If the floor is soaked, that means things above it are soaked. And I, at first I thought it was coming in this door, which I need to figure that out, but that's minor on the list. We found out, we're pretty confident it's the furnace. And as you can tell, there's no way that this was the final design, but this is how I got it, so I didn't question it. The gutter, well, first of all, I made a mistake and the gutter doesn't drain right, so it's been, ironically, of course, it's running right down and it's directly in the center of the furnace which is running into it all right well we're trying to mitigate this so we'll yeah keep you up. we have a lot of water in there right now it's pooling inside the wing wall which we can't get to because the furnace is in the way so i gotta take the furnace out and it's currently raining and we don't have a barn to put this in yet so all right get to it i don't know how we're gonna lose this shiitake Oh yeah, here's the problem. It's actually, okay, so, okay, this is literally holding it in. So this is gonna be a waterfall. I think it's just gonna be a, we rip it out and let it waterfall. I mean, I don't know. It's too shallow, I thought Do you have any plastic you could lay down? That way, you, like put the plastic on the ground and then towels on top, so at least it doesn't. Yeah, that's true. Usually you don't take the furnace, usually you take the pipes out first and then you take the furnace out. So I'm having trouble. Well the wood, the wood might have swelled also. No, it's it's not that, see? Yeah. It's the freaking, I can't get it out of the pipes. down that hole. You see where it went down now? It went down there. Let's make sure it's coming in the dang furnace first. Wet. That's wet. Oops. It must be coming in right there. It has to be coming in right there. I guess yeah, the only... Oh, water. Yeah. I probably can't really tell. Alright, so... I, you know what I mean? I just wanted to make sure that it's coming out of there. All right, so you're looking at the furnace is out. You're looking at the the air intake and exhaust pipe that goes to the outside, which is what we think is the problem. And look here, I'm gonna spread this. Look at that shooting water. That, and that's where it's coming in, 100. percent And it's like, oh my god. I, I'm glad we found it, but it's like, how the hell didn't I think of this and all this other stuff, you know? And it's dripping down there. Yeah, so it's dripping right here, and then it just ran down here, so went down this virgin wall, which is between the bathroom and the this, and then it ran down and got the got the uh, got the whole floor wet. Look at this! Look at this over here. So we got to get the dehumidifier in here and we got to stop it from leaking, which honestly, I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. That's probably what I should do first. One day you're just sewing curtains for your nice, beautiful camper. And then the next day... You're dealing with a full-blown leak. Well, it's, we stopped the leak. <laughs> one good thing we found the leak and stopped it so that's a huge plus but so we got the dehumidifier going So 
So we're working on the furnace and the issue was the rain was running down. I, I pulled the uh, some of the pieces out of it, but the rain is running down here and then it's going into this hopper, which I believe is a heat deflector and because the exhaust is right here and was running down into these little pockets and then it's designed to run down I believe it's designed to run down into here and then run back out and you're good but because I don't have the gutters perfect there's a ton of water running down the side of the camper literally right here <laughs> and it's just funneling in and there was so much getting pounded into here that some of it was going on to this pipe See, this slips into here. I'm not gonna do this right now, but that slips all the way in. And it was running onto this pipe, which was pulling onto the inside of the ventilation, which goes into the furnace. And the camper was a little bit not level, leaning that way. And the water was running in and then dripping between the pipe and a pipe and falling in. And that's that's that was what happened. So to combat this, I do have a little bit of silicone in there, but that's not gonna fix the problem. The, the main fix is I ordered a rain flap or whatever you want to call this cap um, and then it'll deflect the water down and around uh, but it does I haven't really came up with a perfect solution on when you're driving down the road it coming up into here and going right back into that area uh, I think it was the quantity of water like a waterfall running down here that was making it like get that much water in there because I used the hose and, and and replicated it and you could see it. I mean, it was like flowing in there. So I think this this is gonna help, this is gonna fix the problem for 95% of the time. I'm just a little bit worried about, about when you're driving or washing it, which when you're washing it, you can focus on it, but when you're driving, that's what I'm concerned about because that wind can really push and make water go into places that you don't want. I did build like a little dam with high temp silicone but I, I don't think it's gonna solve world problems here. I, I sealed it up right here because there was a little bunch of little spot welds and stuff. So I sealed that, but then I laid it real thick here. It sits higher right there. And they do have a little bead here, a little crimp. And hopefully the water won't run, but I'm not gonna count on that. Um, and then as another addition, inside of there, right under all that, is just the wing wall. And that's right where the it's like dead space under the under the furnace on the horizontal wing wall and we're gonna put we're just gonna um, construction adhesive down an old uh, um, baking pan baking sheet with the sides on it so that if it does leak in there maybe it'll contain it and then it'll evaporate I'd rather be in a can in a, in a sheet pan sloshing around than for sure running all over the camper like it already did so looking into the wood and making it run yeah so and there's like a little window once you put the furnace back in that you can see in there and maybe if you get like a mirror or something maybe you'll be able to look into the sheet pan and see if it's still doing it it'd be cool to make it so you could check it you could be able to check it And then this is the exhaust, which will slide in just like that. So here you see the rain cap installed with it raining and it's obviously working. And I did do a test and I drove and had some driving rain uh, for a couple hours just to see. And I checked the baking dish and it was dry, so it's successful.